The Feast of Corpus Christi. Many centuries had passed over the Church of Christ before there was any distinct feast of the Blessed Sacrament. And in the thirteenth century, when our Lord chose that it should be instituted, he had recourse to a simple nun in a vision to be the instrument of this devotion in his church. St. Thomas Aquinas was living then, and so was King Louis. But God chose neither the learning of the one nor the royal power of the other to be the means of executing his desire. From the age of sixteen, Juliana of Liege recurrently received the same vision when she knelt in prayer. A brilliant moon continually appeared before her with one small portion obscured and invisible. Through her years, she tried in vain to chase that vision away finally our lord himself came to explain it to her he said it was to show that the liturgical year of the church would remain incomplete until the blessed sacrament had a feast of its own and he wished it to be instituted for the following reasons first in order that the catholic doctrine might receive aid from the institution of this festival at this time when the faith of the world was growing cold and heresies were rife second the faithful who love and seek truth and piety could draw from this source of life new strength and vigor to walk continually in the way of virtue third irreverence and sacrilegious behavior towards the divine majesty in the blessed sacrament might by sincere and profound adoration be expunged and repaired then he bade her to announce to the christian world his will that the feast should be observed the canonist was fearful and beseeched the lord to release her from this charge our lord answered her that the solemn devotion which he ordered to be observed was to be begun by her and to be propagated by the poor and low for twenty years the secret lay hidden in juliana's heart she dared not reveal it to any one and yet an interior impulse urged her on so that she could not forget it at length she imparted the mission to her confessor and with her leave he consulted others especially father james de therizis archdeacon at the cathedral of Liège. this priest was afterwards elected bishop of verdun then patriarch of jerusalem and at last pontiff of rome being called urban the fourth from the time it was divulged it became a public question and men were sorely divided upon it many canons and monks protested against the new devotion and argued that the daily sacrifice was sufficient to commemorate the love of jesus in the blessed sacrament juliana prayed on as civic unrest and religious controversies raged around her the city where she lived was lost and won in the waging struggles it was sacked by a lawless army and then retaken three successive of convents were either burned or otherwise destroyed over her head twice she was forced to flee her convent she finally took up residence at fosses les villes where she lived in seclusion until her death yet no earthly troubles could make her forget the task that our lord had assigned her she died before that task was accomplished yet she had done enough in her lifetime to prove for its execution in her wanderings she had met with a few men with devotion and learning to defend the feast of the blessed sacrament and they helped to spread the devotion especially among the simple people after her death pope urban the fourth who was favorable to the feast was asked to extend the devotion to the entire church the eucharistic miracle of orvieto in twelve sixty three was instrumental in his final decision favoring the installation of the feast of corpus christi the miracle of orvieto in twelve sixty three a german priest peter of prague stopped at bolsenia while on a pilgrimage to rome at that time this priest was suffering a crisis of faith doubting that christ was actually present in the consecrated host while celebrating holy mass above the tomb of saint christina in the church named after this martyr he had barely spoken the words of consecration when blood started to seep from the consecrated host and trickle over his hands on to the altar at first the priest attempted to hide the blood but then he interrupted the mass and asked to be taken to the neighboring city of orvieto where pope urban the fourth was then residing the pope listened to the priest's account and dismissed him he then sent emissaries for an immediate investigation when all the facts were ascertained he ordered the bishop of the diocese to bring the host and the linen cloth bearing the stains of blood to orvieto with archbishops 
cardinals, and other church dignitaries in attendance, the Pope met the procession and, amid great pomp, had the relics placed in the cathedral. The linen corporal bearing the spots of blood is still reverently enshrined and exhibited in the cathedral of Orvieto. Soon after the miracle, Urban IV commissioned St. Thomas Aquinas to compose the proper for a mass and an office for the feast day. One year later, in August of 1264, Urban IV instituted the feast of Corpus Christi for the universal church. At the same time, he granted many indulgences to the faithful for attending Mass and the office. The triumph of the Blessed Sacrament was complete, and the devotion spread throughout the length and breadth of Europe. From that time until very shortly after Vatican II, every church in a Catholic country, from the cathedral of a royal city to the most modest village chapel, kept the festival on the Thursday following Trinity Sunday. Prophetically, our Lord saw that in the future this very doctrine would be attacked and the faith would be placed in sore danger. In the zenith of the church's medieval splendor, he foresaw our times. Surely no command was ever better fulfilled than that which promised the church good service by the institution of the feast of Corpus Christi.